Well, delighted to be joined now by Eamon Logue here, the professional at the, the Hilton. I have to say to you, I played this course last week. It's in splendid, splendid condition. Because we're delighted, Adrian, because you, you you were lucky to get it on such a nice day. We weren't expecting the weather to be nice, and it was a great... Uh, turned out really, really well, and Michael and the team have been working tremendously hard now because we had Captain's Day past Saturday. So in a little run into that, we had obviously the big travel news day you played on, and... Uh, I was fortunate enough to see you out in the golf course, and I must say the swing really is coming on well. Now you're, 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 you're working on what we told you. <laughs> you didn't even smile if you lied there. But, but it, it's lovely to have the lads here as well too this morning as we look ahead to uh, the very prestigious Open. It's great to see the quality of golf that we have here at home as well. The lads that are putting stuff back into the youth, back into the youngsters. Absolutely, because the three chaps, Stephen, Colin and Barry, are all from different parts of the country, but in a, in, they still have the same... Uh, enthusiasm for the younger men in golf because of obviously the aspirations of Rory and Graham and Darren that have come on through and obviously recently Simon Thornton who's um, what we call still class as a blow-in from, from England but Simon represents the Irish PGA any time that he's home so the boys of all they work with clinics with kids all the time I know we, we talk quite a lot about what they're working on how they're getting kids into the golf club to get that basis to, to build on for full membership in the f- in the future year so it's it's at a healthy state at the minute so everybody's pretty much happy with that now Healthy state because of the, the hard work being done at ground level by ourselves and probably in a healthy state too, following the success of the likes of McDowell, Clark, you know, uh, Rory, Pothig Harrington as well too, you know, people people look at it and say, well if those lads can do it locally, I can do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because you, first of all you see the trappings, you would see how they travel around the world, they're staying in nice hotels, they're flying on sometimes private jets and they're getting lots of money, they've got sponsors emblazoned all over their bags and their shirts and stuff, but in behind that, Adrian, there's a lot of hard work goes on. I mean, you just don't get that by just turning up. I mean, they put hours and hours of hard work in the practice area with their coaches and respective people, the team that's, that surrounds them. So what the pros here try to do really is give a basis of what they've got to expect in the future, that they can't get all that from not working hard at their game. And it's explaining to the children that they have to spend hours and hours in the practice area at all aspects before trappings like that would come along for them. McDowell has been the best of, uh, I would mm-hmm. call, our local lads with regard to form this season. Yeah. H- have we any right to be disappointed when the likes of, you know, uh, G. Mac or McElroy or Harrington and these lads, you know, when they don't seem to produce the goods at the big ones? Well, I don't know, because, it, you know, they, they say that form is temporary and class is permanent. And I think that, you know, listening to what Rory was saying prior to the US Open, he said, you know, he's entirely happy with the way his game's going. He said it might happen this week, next week, or the week after. You know, it, it, when all his ducks line up and he gets everything going, I, I just look into the way he's swinging the golf club. And he, I mean, he looks superb. A couple of loose shots. The U.S. Open can really test everybody because of the way the U.S. GA would set that up in order that. And from the winning score from Justin Rose, I mean, one over par, they'd be delighted with that because there's nobody in the red for the, throughout the week. So, I mean, I think that you know, Rory's obviously this under the spotlight. G. Mac came in as a heavy favourite, and everybody had backed him and. and it obviously didn't work out for Graham on the weekend. Unfortunately, Darren was the same. They both, you know, they missed playing at the weekend. But I think at the end of the day, as the year progresses, and you know, there's another major night coming, as we know, the Open in a few weeks' time. And it's just the, once things start to get together for for all of them, I think we're going to see some some of the Irish players definitely with the obvious Irish Open next week. I think we're going to see some new, um, some better form coming through. And obviously, we're all fingers crossed that that's the case. You know, we get a home winner. I want to talk about the Open too, you know, you say but you want to get a home winner. Um, Tiger Woods has opted out because of an elbow injury. Uh, in the past, I suppose Tiger Woods could have just shown up at any stage, but mm-hmm. the way the current game is, mm-hmm. uh, it's missing out three or four weeks ago. Is that a hindrance to him ahead of the Open? Well, I don't think so, because he'd, he'd obviously go away from and take stock of what happened at, 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 at you know at the US Open and find out where, where, where was he lacking. You know, we've seen... His game looked sharp enough. He maybe the greens just tested him to a, a point where he's working so much and trying to get the shape of the ball right that maybe he ignores parts of the game that he would be more or less spending more time at. Um, it's always a, a serious examination for all those players. You know, obviously we saw Mickelson not taking the driver out of the bag, he had the three within the bag all week. You know, and that shows how serious obviously he was taking the finish and finishing made again for the sixth time was just I mean heartbreaking for him as he said in the interview afterwards. But taking weeks off, I don't think it's going to affect them. You know, those guys are just, it's not like they're lying back and sunning themselves. I mean, they're working hard at it. So they're still getting club on ball for most of the time that they're off. British Open's very special to all of us over mm. here in this part of the world too. Like that. And uh, it's uh, just a few days away, I suppose, at this stage. How would you, who would you look to for the Open? 
Well, you're always going to go for the farm horse at the minute. I know everybody, you know, the money's back on, on Rose at the minute. Um, Phil Mickelson again on his show and looking at the, at the odds that they still have Tiger at number one favourite. Uh, Rory comes in in a close second. And then they obviously fall back in Justin Rose. Uh, Phil Mickelson in his recent form. And then obviously, you know, I think people are looking away from Ernie Els. You know, Ernie has, again, finished fourth in at the US Open last week. They're playing at Muirfield where he won in 2002. He won, he's the defending champion. So, you know, there, there's there's an awful lot of people to choose from in the top ten you know, and coming into it. So it's really exciting. It's a tough, tough one to pick. And uh, But Muirfield, they've, they've made changes in the golf course in 2010, 2011. Extended and out of 7,245 yards and, you know, just short of 150 bunkers. Again, is going to be one of those, you know, course management is going to be key. I don't know how fast they can get the greens, but I'm sure with the weather that we've seen here and how fast the grass is growing, it's going to be kind of lush just off the fairways now. So getting on the short stuff is premium, as you would well know. You're talking about short stuff. You're talking <laughs> about bunkers. You're talking yeah. about all this stuff. You're talking about yeah. weather, everything. Yeah. Who's going to win it? Who's going to win? I'm going to put my money, would you believe, on an Australian, Jason Day, because he has shown in the last few tournaments, the last few majors, he really has an appetite for this. And obviously seeing Justin Rose pick that up, and he's of that young age where he's not fear, he doesn't fear anybody. He's not looking at the top of the board and looking at odds. And he is one of my picks now for this, for, for the Open Championship. And I think that he is going to break through, and hopefully it's in July at Muirfield. Your prediction just uh, tells me again how exciting the sport is because mm -hmm. we have four lads here, you're including yourself this morning, and it's all different picks. Yes. It shows you that unlike maybe 20 years ago or so when there was only two or three, mm -hmm. nowadays it could be any one of 20, 30 people could, could win the British Open. Absolutely. You know, because it's a worldwide game now. It's not just kept, of, you know, you have the European Tour, PGA Tour, but you go across Asia, you see the, the emergence of a lot of young players coming through. And I think at the end of the day, these guys are so well travelled that they, they they know themselves confidence-wise. I mean, call it ego, call it whatever you like, but confidence-wise, they're riding on the crest of a wave at the minute. And there are so many of them showing good form, which is great because in open coming into any open championship or any major championship, it's great for the bookies, it's great for the punters, it's great that everybody. It's an exciting TV to watch. So, I think we're going to go fingers crossed. We get a home winner, like I mentioned, but it's tough to see anybody at home just at this stage. And it's, as I say, I'm going to put my little ten pound that I want to collect off the boys later on on Jason Day. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.